Beach fishing with a clear goal brings results. Hi, my name's Roger Osborne. I don't know about you, but I love being successful with my fishing and I always have a clear goal. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you why I am fishing where I'm fishing, how I chose the location, what baits I'm using, where I'm casting, and everything else that I can think of to help you with your fishing. If you're enjoying these videos and you are finding them helpful, please make sure that you like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. Let's get started. I've come down to a local beach to catch a few beach worms. I'm mindful of the time because I really just want to grab enough worms quickly for bait for what I need. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to fish in this location because I just want to suss out the water. But yeah, it's going to grab a few worms and then I'll make a decision on where I'm going to fish. A worm came up. It's one of those long ones. And he'll be an opportunity now. Hopefully I can get him. Whoa, beauty! That's the first worm that I've seen and he's not a bad one. Lovely worm bait for Brimmel Whiting. So it's one down and a few more to go. There's not a lot of worms here, but they're pretty good size actually. Just waiting for a little uh, a gap in the waves here to catch this worm. Just going to let him grab hold of it. I can feel a wave. <laughs> I could hear that wave coming, and I just rushed it a little bit at the end. All good. This is a short stubby worm, I think. Come on, you. Where's he gone? There he is. Oh no, it's not a short stubby one. No, oh, I was wrong. He's a little bit bigger. Just fold him up. I'm always watching the waves because there's no point, no point attempting to get a worm when there's obviously a, a wave's going to come and crash up and hit you. So I'm always checking it out, waiting for an opportunity. <laughs> Look at that! What is that? That's a peewee worm. I mean, it's thick enough to use for bait. It's just really short. There he is. Look at that. Oh, I'll let you grab onto that. There, yeah, no, don't go anywhere. Oh, all right, okay. Well, that's a good one. I've been so encouraged by all the testimonials of people doing my beach worming course. I've spent the last couple of years putting my whole heart into creating something very detailed. I've written a book on beachworming and my beachworming course has 18 videos in detail. People are really having great results so if you'd like to catch beachworms head on over to my website rogersfishing.com and you'll find all of my training information there. Come on. Bite onto the bait, you sausage. Oh, where did he go? That was very rude of that worm. He just took off. <laughs> yeah, they're only little worms, these. Just a little fella. There's a whole bunch of little ones here, but they're still okay for bait. While I'm worming, I'm just checking out the conditions. Woo. These are such an amazing bait. I think you can actually catch more variety of species, quality eating fish with beach worms than just about any other bait that you use off the beach. That's certainly my experience from 40 odd years of beach fishing. Oh, here it is. I don't think it's all that big, actually. Got to let it bite it. Oh, okay. Wasn't quite sure how big that one would be, but it's just a moderate, moderate sized worm. But 
he'll go in with the other ones. I think that's it. I've been worming for about 25 minutes. There's not miles of worms just here, but certainly got plenty for bait. So I'm ready to have a fish now. Pretty pumped about that. Really, I'm fishing right at the bottom of the tide. A low tide, there's still a bit of swell. There's about 1.5 metres of swell today, so there's quite a bit of turbulence. And really, my main criteria today was to find some water that was deep enough to hold some quality fish. There was lots of pockets of water along this beach that were perhaps only two or three feet deep. You may catch a few small fish. This particular area I'm fishing is the deepest part that I could find within casting distance. And that was probably my main priority at low tide was to find some good water that I could reach. And it was really very limited today. I looked at two different beaches and this was the best spot that I could find. Certainly looks fishy. I expect to catch fish. How many, I'm not sure. But I'm gonna have a bit of a test cast right now. I can see there's a bit of turbulence out there. That was the only, this was definitely the deepest trough I could find close to shore. The only negativity was possibly a little bit of turbulence and drift. So therefore, I'm using a star sinker and not a ball sinker. If I used a ball sinker out here, it would just roll. And I'd have to walk with it and walk along the beach with it. So let's see how it goes. First cast, see what happens. As you know, I've just caught these lovely worms. They're amazing creatures. I've crumbed them with sand because otherwise they're too slippery to hold. So I always um, put sand on them so that I can actually thread them on the hook and hold them. So this worm is going on there and it's actually going up above the top of the hook. I'm going to leave a little bit hanging on the bottom and just chop it off with my nails. And I'm using a two hook rig. I often like to use a two hook rig, so now I'm gonna put the next part of the worm on this hook. They're so wriggly, these things, man, they just, you've gotta focus. But the fish love them. Oh yeah, ready to go. Now, I'm just gonna explain a little bit about this particular spot. There's a trough that is pretty much running parallel to the beach here and then it heads out to sea to my right. Where I've come to start fishing is right up in the very corner of where the trough starts because I expect that there'll be the least amount of current here. There's a big sandbar to my left. You can see all the big waves coming in out the back. And this little trough, it kind of comes to a corner just here. If I kept walking to the left, it would just be shallow water. So I'm coming right up into the corner of this trough. And also all of that turbulence washing across the sandbar will wash any potential food into that depression, which is where I expect to find some fish. It'll be interesting to see how much sideways current there is. Hopefully not too much. Still, even so, even so, I still felt that this was definitely the better place to fish you know, considering my overall goal is to catch dinner. I've got no fish at home and uh, I'm hungry. So I'm just gonna walk out a little bit just so that I can get out into that nice little deep trough out there. So I'll wander out a little bit and then flick my line. I'm kind of in, uh, landing right. That was a pretty good spot to land actually. I'm landing right in the head, headwaters of that, that trough. Now we'll see how long it takes to get a bite and how much my bait moves along. The waves are washing in from my left. There's a northeast swell. And what that means is that swell is coming in from a northeasterly direction this way so most of the water is coming in from the northeast and then pushing out to the southeast. Hang on, it's had a bit of a nibble then. Hang on, it's grabbed it and it's run in with it. Yeah, I got a fish. 
That fish swam in with it. It took the bait and then swam in. Well, that's all right. The bait was only in the water about, what, three minutes? I'm not sure. Oh, it's just a flathead. It's a fish though. Now this is a sand flathead. It's got little kind of slightly pale blue spots on it. It's hard to tell. And that flathead's actually a legal sized fish. So, I mean, flathead tails are absolutely beautiful to eat. So I'm gonna keep him considering I'm so hungry and I'm keen for a fish feed. Although he swallowed the hook and they've got very sharp teeth, so I'm gonna to have to re-tie my hook because undoubtedly the line will be really frayed and you don't wanna chuck your line back out if you've got frayed line. All right, okay, um, I wasn't expecting a flathead. My main culprits I'm expecting out here would be brim whiting and salmon mainly, so we'll see. But that was fun anyway. Excellent. That's a good spot. Just checking my drag. I want to have a little bit of give in it. I don't want it too light. I don't want a fish to be able to pull that line too easily. Come on, fish. Even though I've got a star sinker on, I'm still getting washed with that current because it's fairly strong. So I'm going to walk with it a little bit. If I tucked right up in the corner of this trough, I'd probably hold my ground. What a great thing to do with your time. Do, do something wonderful in the outdoors and catch food at the same time. This is the worm bait that I was using earlier. I've got a stocking with um, some pilchards in the bottom of it. And I'm just... Um, I decided to keep these to use as burley. So I'm going to walk down up in the top end of that little trough and I'm going to mush these up and get the scent going out through that um, gutter. I've walked to the left about 50 metres or so from where I'm fishing because because of that strong current, I want to make sure that any scent that I create doesn't disappear down the beach too quickly. So I'm going to put it up here in the shallow water and let it filter out to where I'm actually fishing. And all I'm going to do is, um, these are fairly soft, so all I'm going to do is just really mush them up and let all the blood and guts and everything come out and uh, let that lovely flavour filter out into the ocean. So I think this is a good place to do it because it will go that way. Yeah, I can see the blood and the goodies going into the water. You can see I'm, I'm just really mushing all this stuff up. Oops. So I'll put that in there. Now that's going to go out there and it's going to end up where I'm casting my line. Now I've got that burly. It's going to gradually work its way down here which will be very good, I expect. Anything that's out there should smell it. Just want to get out into this deeper water. Oops, I'm falling in. Oops. I didn't fall over, it's all good. <laughs> Just wanted to get out in that slightly deeper water into the channel. I can really feel the drag on my line. Hang on, I'm getting a bite. I think that was a bite. 
Not sure. Yeah, I'm definitely getting some nibbles. Yeah, got him. Whoa! I better loosen this drag a little bit. Okay. Well, I'm locked up. It's pulling line. Whoa, so I'm going to be fighting fish and current. So I think I might have to walk this way. Man, it's a lot of moving up and down the beach here. This fish is heading south. What's going on? Still walking. Wow. I'm just tightening my drag a little bit because when I wind, it's just been spinning. And it's made it a little bit harder to get line back. I've ended up on this shallow sandbar. The fish has swum right out onto the sandbar, which I don't mind actually. It's better than being out in that, all that current. I can see it in the distance. Wow. Man, my bag is a long way from here. But I can feel dinner coming. Oh, it's still pulling line. There's another trough over there. I don't really want him to swim into that other trough. Just want him to come in here on the shallows. Uh, now I've got all this drag from the water, which um, doesn't really help. Okay, he's pretty chunky. Okay. These fish are really chunky. They're actually awesome fish. And the yield that you get from them the fillets are very good. They're very good smoked. And I've got some diving buddies, some really excellent free divers. And these are their favorite fish for ceviche, which is when you have the raw fish sliced thinly and you sprinkle lemon juice or lime juice on it with some fresh herbs and a little bit of thinly sliced onion. It's fantastic. I tried some the other day. It was actually really good. So I'm going to carry this guy up. Whoa. I just pulled the hook out of this salmon and it's quite bent, obviously put under a lot of pressure by that fish. They're very strong. Now I actually dealt with that fish up the beach because it had taken me so far away from my gear, I killed it quickly up the beach before I brought it back. And uh, now I need to just bend this hook back into shape and rebait. Oh, time to whack it out again. You know, I put that burley in a few, a few minutes ago and I can see a school of fish has swum up this gutter. You probably can't see on the camera, but there's a dark patch out there. There's no weed anywhere. So that pilchard scent that I put in has drawn a school of salmon up into this trough. 
Now, I can, I can actually see a big school of fish that weren't here in this position before that have come up as a result of that pilchard scent. So let's see how quickly I get a bite. I would expect to get a bite fairly quickly. Because I've landed in that dark patch, which I expect is a school of fish. Actually, I think, I think the fish have gone right up into there. I'm going to cast my line right up in the corner because the water has changed colour and it can only be fish. So I'm going to toss up into that corner. This is almost like sight fishing for trout. Okay, and I'm pretty sure that's landed in amongst the fish. I think I had a nibble then. Yeah, I'm getting a bite. Just felt a bite then. I'm just going to lean into it, yep. Okay, it didn't take too long. Woo! Look at that. It's like a marlin leaping out of the water. It's just not too far out in front of me, but it'll uh, probably leap out of the water again. Might be fractionally bigger than the last one, I'm not sure. Oh, there it goes. Nice, similar size, I think. I just did a pirouette. This is relatively, still relatively light line that I'm using. At the moment, my line, my rod is spooled with 15 pound line. I might get an opportunity to bring him in now. On with this wave, maybe. Yeah, I think this wave will do it. Oh, would you believe he got off <laughs> and went woo, like that? Okay, so what's happened? It's actually the hook that I caught the last salmon on. I tried to straighten it, I mean, I tried to bend it, but the actual gape of the hook is quite open now and he was hooked on the same hook so I think I'm going to need to replace this hook actually uh, I better do that quickly before the sun goes away you can see how the top hook here has been the gape of the hook has been opened and stretched I tried to push it closed but it was difficult I don't have any pliers so I'm just replacing it with a new one I lost that last fish because my hook was damaged. Um, I did risk casting it out again, but now I'm not going to waste. I'm not going to do that again.
I'm happy with how that little bit of burley worked. In fact, I can see a dark patch right up in the corner where I, where I first put that, that sand. It's actually over to my left. Probably be better off casting over there. I might do that actually. Because I can definitely see fish there. Although I think if I waited, I'd still hook another one anyway, but I'm going to chuck it over there. Why waste time, I say. I'm going to just pop it. Yep, that's a good spot, I think. Maybe I'll get surprised and catch a different fish. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of action out there, but I'm just waiting. Can't feel anything swimming away with, swimming away with it yet. Hang on, here we go. Come on. Very interesting. Salmon are normally quite aggressive biters. These bites have not been aggressive. Yeah, that's um that's a fish this time. Hopefully after a solid fight, I actually get to keep this one. Okay, I can see, can you see that beautiful rainbow? That's a fairly mild, it's not a heavy rainbow, whoops. But uh, not a really strong rainbow, but wow. Sheesh. Still got a bit of grunt. I always take my time with fish near the shore because this is where a lot of fish are lost, is in the shore break. Actually, it's just near my feet right now. I'm going to try and muscle him up a little bit. It's another really fat specimen. And really only lipped, actually. Whoa. You can see the hook. It's just right in the top of his mouth. So really, not hooked very deeply at all. Well, I've achieved my goal so far this evening. I've got a beautiful feed of fish. I've got two lovely salmon and a flathead. I'll probably fish for a bit longer, I think, because it's just so lovely down here.
Okie dokie. Really, this is a great, a great spot. I'm really happy that I chose this spot. I'm really happy that I chose this spot. I put a little bit of thought into it. Hang on, I'm getting a bite. It's swimming towards me. Yeah. Now my concern is if I get a double hook up. Because um, that would be really interesting with two salmon fighting against each other on relatively light nine. I don't know if that's the case now, but there's certainly some weight on the end of this. And it's heading down south again. Oh no, he's heading back up north. No, I think it's only one fish, which is good. They've all been jumping a lot, actually. It's getting closer. get him in as soon as I can. He's close. Maybe I can just keep keep coming with this little wave of water. Here comes another little wave. Just keep enough pressure on him and I'll get him up with this wave. Same as the other ones, like only just lipped really. You can see the hook is only just in the corner of his mouth. So I think this, is, this will be the last salmon that I keep in this session. I've got three. If I catch any more, I'll let them go. I've noticed something interesting with these salmon. I have a two hook rig today. I've got one hook that's up high, which is several feet off the bottom. And I've got a hook down low which you can't see. Oh, there's a worm bait on it way down there. All of the fish have been caught on the top hook. Every single one, including the one that I lost, was on the top hook. So they're taking it not on the bottom, but sort of mid-water a little bit. My overarching goal is always, I love catching fish, so that's my goal, I want to catch fish. So I always have a plan and a strategy based on the prevailing conditions. And today, really, the first thing was I needed to find water of sufficient depth at low tide when there's still quite a lot of waves around. And the two beaches that I looked at really only had one good spot, which is this particular spot, where I've burlied, and definitely, without doubt, the burley drew a school of salmon up into this trough, which has been fantastic. So have a great catch of fish. I'm gonna have a few more casts because it's just so beautiful down here. If I catch another salmon, I'll let it go, but I still might catch a brim or something else as well.
I landed right on the edge of where the water goes deep off the back of that sandbar. Yeah, something's going on. I'm getting a bite. I can feel a bit of rumbling, a bit of action. It's actually coming back towards me. I think I'm going to lean into it. Yep. So really there's an abundance of fish here in this particular spot. What I liked about this trough is that sometimes you get areas of you know, reasonable depth of water at low tide, but they're not open to the, op to the ocean. Whereas the waves are closing out right across the back. However, the water in this particular spot is deep enough for bigger fish to get in. There's a few other places up and down this beach today where the water's just too shallow and there's no access point for fish to come in from out the back. And even in these conditions at low tide, because of this is a lovely deep trough, fish would hold up here and just stay here and wait for the tide to get higher. One of the other reasons I chose this spot because it was the only spot I thought that you'd actually get salmon today. The other places were too shallow. I didn't think there'd be any salmon in those locations. Just too shallow. Let's see if this guy's on the top hook again. Yeah, on the top hook, I can tell. Thankfully he's also only hooked on the side. Very fat fish, extremely fat fish. Look at the girth of this thing, really fat. And he'll go back really easily because, oh, the hook is just in the side of his mouth. I should be able to pop it out. Yep, there goes the hook. I'll just put him in this nice little calm bit of water here. Just revive him. <laughs> he was a little tired out, but he was good then. He swam off well. I've had an awesome session. Considering the conditions and really the lack of decent troughs or gutters on the beaches, this has been fantastic. It's been action-packed the whole time. The salmon have been stealing my bait. Nothing else can get it, but very happy about that. And I definitely know that the salmon came right up into that gutter after I mushed up all those pilchards there. It definitely worked and made a big difference to my fishing. So thank you so much for watching. It's been a beautiful afternoon down here on the New South Wales South Coast. I trust that you are healthy and well, and I look forward to seeing you very soon in the next video.